Well, welcome back to Modeling Time with me, Brian Bannon. Now, in the last video, I talked about trucks. And in this video, I'm going to talk about trucks again. Now, in the last video, I showed, you know, how to take or how I was taking the brake cylinders off the side frames. And I was going to rant about it and such. And then I go, oh, look at this. They pop right off. Yeah, well, that wasn't the case. Uh, a few of the pins broke. I'll have to make new pins to put those back in. So I'm not going to bash scale trains. I'm not going to talk bad about them. Um, I doubt that there's any employees watching this video series. And um, But in the event that there is, I just want to ask, why are you gluing parts onto an undecorated model? Why? You've got this bag full of little parts, big parts, various size parts, and you felt the need to glue the brake cylinders on to the side frames. I, I, I can't figure out why. Now, I, in the last video, I was thinking, oh, maybe it's because so you, don't for, you don't forget or, um, you know, which or where the brake cylinders go in. Well, after looking at the side frames, popping them off, popping the brake cylinders off, breaking a few of the pins, I noticed that you can't go wrong with putting the brake cylinders on. The, the two separate brake cylinders have different pin um, spacings, so they only go in one way. So why on God's green earth are you gluing parts onto an undecorated model? So that's all I'm going to say about it. Just please manufacturer, stop gluing parts onto undecorated models. Stop painting undecorated models gray. Just let us do it. That's why we buy undecorated models so that we can build them. You don't have to build them for us. So please just stop. Okay, all done. Now, to get back to modeling. So in this video, we're going to actually start building the trucks. So let me get the camera set up and I'll go over the steps that I'm going to go through to build these. Now I'm going to go in numerical order. So the first one is going to be from unit uh, 4351. That one's unusual um, for the fact that it has eight speed recorder um, um, mechanisms. Um, on the right side of the uh, locomotive, all axles have a speed recorder mechanism, although they're blanked off. On the left side, you got a speed recorder in the middle axle on the front. You've got a, if I remember correctly, a mechanism on the rear axle on the front, and then the, on the rear axle there are none. So there's eight total. So there's six on the right side and two on the left side. So let me show you that um, in the detail parts that I have, and let me get started, and uh, we'll get moving on with these SD45s. So here's the parts that I'll be using. Um, I may have, may have missed something, but and I'll add it later. But anyways, these are the speed recorders that I'll be using to put on the extra axles. Now you'll notice there's a hole in there. Well, well, we'll take care of that. So I need eight of these. There's two to a pack, so I've got all the packs I need. These are what's going to fill that hole in the center and represent the cap that's on the prototype. Now what these are, and, and they're really nice, these are the access covers in the Cannon and Company um, nose kits. I have a whole bunch of extras. I never, I've never built a model that that uses these, so I've got a whole bunch of them and even more than this floating around in my parts boxes. So I'll be uh, cutting these off, cleaning them up, and then on these holes, I'll be opening them up just a little bit because on the backs of these access covers is a little circular lip that goes around. I don't know if you can really see that. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit here. So I don't know if you can see that on the backs of those. Shoot, I don't even know if I can see that on the back. Let me put my OptiVisors on. Oh, that's the wrong side. There we go. So maybe you can see that on the backs of those. There's a little um, circular lip 
So I'll measure that and I'll drill this hole out just enough to give it a little bit of play and I can glue those in there. <clears throat> so I'll take care of those. Now here you can see the broken off pins here, here, and here. What I'll do to repair those is the pin, the original pins are 35 thousandths diameter. I'll use, <coughs> excuse me, I'll use 33 thousandths brass wire. I'll drill these out to about 34 thousandths. I'll put the um, brass pin into the brake cylinder and I'll be able to just glue it back in so that should work um, as long as I can drill drill those little little pin areas out and put the uh, put the wire in them everything will be okay <clears throat> so the first thing that I need to do these are not made out of friendly plastic you can see the shine in them these are made out of uh, Delrin or Celcon or that slippery plastic. So the first thing I need to do is grip blast these. So I'll get that done and I'll grip blast the same with the, um, <coughs> excuse me, got a frog in my throat. Um, first thing I need to do, or I'm, I'm, first thing, I already told you what the first thing, I need to grip blast it, but I also need to grip blast these brake cylinders and brake clasps. So I'll get those done. Now I clean these up. Another, another disappointing um, thing on these. <laughs> You're gonna love this. So that's the face of the brake cylinder. Now you can't see it because I cleaned them all up. <clears throat> right smack in the middle of the most visible part of the brake cylinder is a mold ejection pin mark and it's not sticking out it's not an Audi it's an innie so these being these being Delrin you see how they're slipping out of my fingers these being Delrin you're not going to be able to fill that too easily and have it stay in there so what I did is I just kind of carved it out and I blended in the circular just sc scraping around and blending it in so that it, it would disappear but <laughs> that's just another one of those things it's like come on for crying out loud you put the ejection pin mark on the most visible part of the brake cylinder so anyway those are all done <clears throat> the other nice wonderful thing that they did even though I'm not I'm not bashing scale trains the model's still an excellent model it's just these little things when you start looking at things up close. On these Hyatt roller bearing caps, you know how they're all individual pieces in there? See all those? There, there, there. That's fine. They cut them off the tree for you. Well, when they cut them off the tree, they cut them off the tree right up here. There's a flat spot on the top, which is clocks it in the side frame. Well, when they cut it off the tree, the person who cut them off cut them off right up next to the circular part of the Hyatt roller bearing. So they flattened one side. They cut a little bit of the circular part off. Not on all of them, but I would say on a better than 90% of them. So you might as well say all of them. So you got to reshape that a little bit so you can kind of get rid of that flat spot on the top. So, and then the. Uh, what I told you before about the sanding hoses, I'm going to just use a little bit of the end of it, drill it out, and put a pin in there. So let me go ahead and get these uh, Delrin parts. I don't know why they can't make these out of friendly, glue-friendly plastic. I just don't get it. Why do you have to make a side frame out of Delrin? Why? I don't, I don't understand. Anyway. Guess you got just got to live with what they give you. <clears throat> You're not going to change them. Anyway, so let me get these parts grip blasted, and then we'll get down to uh, building oh. it. Okay, so I've built one one side frame. Now I do that all the time when there's multiple things to build because I want to be able to show you all what I've done to build it. So this one's done. Everything's glued in nice and secure. I've caught my fingers on these a few times, so 
on the sanding nozzles so they're they're secure and um, let me zoom in just a little bit here Oop, sorry too far there we go so um, I thought I was using 12 thousandths wire here but it turned out to be 10 thousandths I had some 10 thousandths in my 12 thousandths um, tube my titchy tube here but uh, I actually like it better um, I think it I think it'll work out really nice this flexible hose here and here is um, from Loke Sound. It's the wire shielding from Loke Sound. It's a black. And uh, the brackets are made by um, annealing and smashing flat round, uh, round wire. So, and then I've got the um, speed recorders portion flange from the Details West SR285 and I've got the caps are from the Cannon and Company um, nose kit. So that's what that's done there. Um, I've got the brake cylinders glued in. I've also glued them at this point here where the brake cylinder is up against the bracket so that's nice and solid. And other than that that's one that's the the right one of the right side trucks to 43 what was that again? 43, 4351. Okay, so the next one I build will be the rear truck, will look just like this one. So I will do that one on a video and show you all the steps I went through. I did not make a pattern for this brake line. Um, so I've got, uh, what is that? Uh, 4, 8, 12. I got 16 of these things to make. It's not fun, but it needs to be done, and I, I think it looks good. I think it turned out all right. So on day two of truck building and uh, before I move on I want to explain something. Remember a few frames ago or segments ago I was talking about or complaining about the um, the uh, ejector pin being on the face, the outside face of the brake cylinder. Although that is a bad thing uh, in this case it worked out okay for scale trains because that um, ejector pin winds up mark wind, that ejector pin mark winds up behind this bracket here so it kind of it hides it it's still good the brackets not com won't completely cover it but it will hide it pretty good so that you have to look really close to see it but it, I, I think it's still a good idea to try to clean that up and and so when you put it in there it uh, hides it completely so let's move on to other things all right so I've got 16 of these brake lines these brake lines that I have to build so I'm gonna build all of those first because I started building some so here's here's one here's one and here's one. So that's three more. So that'll finish off this set of trucks. But I'm going to bend all 16 of these, or yeah, all 16 of these. I've got four of them bent right now. So um, I'm going to bend all 12 more, and then I'll start building the trucks. But I'll show you what I did because I was I was bending these one at a time. And I'm like, oh, there's no way that's going to take freaking forever. So I made a little tool it'll help me do that and that's this tool here and I I can't do it with um, the brass or the bronze wire that's not annealed so this this last one I did is one that has annealed wire and it does go much faster and I should be able to get all of these done in a day or two so that fits in there pretty much like that so I'll just anneal a piece of bronze or brass wire stick it in and just start bending it around now the bends aren't perfect 
in this, so I have to take them out and use either tweezers to tweak them, or the chisel tweezers to tweak them, or this. Um, this was a Xeron uh, photo etch metal bending tool, which I, I thin the nose down on it. So I can use that to tweak them, or I use flat nose pliers to tweak them. So let me build one of these on camera here. Let me zoom back a little bit and we'll see if we can get something going here. So, let me see, is this one annealed enough? No. So I need to, I need to anneal this. Alright, so to anneal it, we just have to run it through the, the flame. The longer you leave it in the flame, the softer it'll get. So this one's going to be pretty soft because I can see that there's a little bit of peeling bronze right there. Now what you want to do is you want to clean this thing off so when I'm done bending it, I'll take some alcohol and I'll clean it off, otherwise it, the uh, CA won't stick to it really well. So then I'll just take this piece, stick it down inside of there. Let me zoom in a little bit more. How's that? That's better. I'm going to try to stay on camera. Please forgive me if I go off camera a little bit. So I'm just going to take my screwdriver here, press it into the slot there. Then I'm just going to take it and wrap it around, press it into the angle. Like that. Ooh, I need to anneal these things a little bit more. They seem to set really good once you get them pressed in. Press it there. Like that. Now, what I want to do is I want to take the spring out of that. So I'm going to pull that piece out. Where's my... There we go. I'm going to pull that piece out. Now remember, now that these are annealed, you can't handle them roughly. But that's okay, because once you get them on the model, you're never going to be handling them again anyway. So I want to simply make sure that that angle is a right angle there. Okay. And I want to bring this angle up a little bit more. And I want to... Make this go straight. And let me see how that fits in back in. That's a so we're gonna redo that again. You're going to be doing quite a bit of tweaking when you do these things. I'm going to use these pliers because this flat or this angle is as, wide, as long as these, these pliers are wide. So let me get that in there. There we go. That's what I want. Now, I need to make sure this angle is at a 90 degree. There we go. Alright, so now I can stick that back in there. Oh, I need to make sure, sorry, the whole reason for this was to make sure this angle was at a 90 degree. There we go. Stick that back in there.
All right, so I'm going to hold that there. I'm going to take this, bend it. That way. Now I got to take it out again and straighten everything up. That's what it's a it's easier to do it with a piece of annealed wire, but you have to handle it very carefully. With non annealed wire, it's just going to spring back horribly. So that's getting all bent up, but that's okay. I can straighten it out with the pair of pliers by just squeezing it. Get everything back in line. I'm going to bend that a little bit more. There we go. Let's see how that goes. And get this back in line. There we go. Really sorry if I'm covering everything up, but it's kind of hard showing this and doing it properly to keep everything in line without bending the crap out of this thing. So now that that's there, I just have to make this last bend. And you'll see it springs back just a little bit, but I'll come back and I'll tweak that in. So actually I can take this up just a little bit. Take my tweezers and just tweak it. And then to cut it, I just use my, where'd they go? Oh, there we go, right there. My chisel tool. And cut it off. So there it is. And now I'll, I'll tweak that out a little bit right there to make it straight. So let's test that and see how it matches up to my original. have to tweak this end down here just a little bit okay so there's the original and this needs to go that way I still have to cut off this leg down here a little bit That looks pretty darn good to me. I think it'll work. So I think the the uh, bending tool works, speeds it up a little bit. That took me a lot longer to do the ones without the that were not annealed, and I just did them by making marks on them. So let me go ahead and get all of these made, and then we'll come back and start building the side frame. So here I have all of the uh, brake plumbing bent. It actually went faster than I thought it would. I thought it was going to take me a couple days to do all that, but it took me only a couple, two, maybe three hours to do all that, and that's because I had this tool that I made. And you might be wondering, well, how did I know how to make the tool? Well, I already had a couple of them pre-made. So I just laid it in there, made the uh, straight part first, then made the, the angled bend, like here, and then did this straight part, which is up here, and then did this angle, and then this last one on the bottom, which is down here. So these are the ones I'm working on now. These are for the, the other models. So let me go ahead and put these aside, and we'll pull a truck out and start working on it, or a side frame, we'll start working on it. All right. So let's get started on building this uh, second side frame. This is going to be for the rear truck on the right side of 4351. Um, so the first thing I do is um, these brake cylinders. 
Um, the last one that I get to it has the broken pins and I'll show you how I fix those. So this, the first one, the second one, and the third one, the pins didn't break on. So I got lucky with that. So the first thing I do is I take a 35 thousandths drill bit and I just clean out these holes. I don't want to drill them any deeper. There's no need to. I just clean them out. This piece of tape's here to hopefully keep me on camera. Now, something you need to know, when you, when you take these brake cylinders off, I've cleaned them all up. I've taken the flash off. There used to be a, um, a sprue booger right up here on top. Right up here on top, I've scraped off the um, mold parting lines. There's really not any flash on these. Um, except for on the mounting pins at the very back where they pull out of the mold and there's a little bit of flash that comes off the tips of those pins. So I clean that off so that they'll seat into the holes good. The part you have to be careful with is the, is the piston side. Even though these are made with Delrin, you still don't want to bend them too much um, to break them off. So, so these are all cleaned up. All, everything's ready to go. So I've cleaned up the holes. now. When you put these brake cylinders on, you'll notice there, you can't go wrong with how they go in. Take a look at these two cylinders. You'll notice these two pins are closer together than these two pins. So you've got a pair of close together holes and a little bit further apart. So it's, it's a no-brainer on how they go together. And yes, you can see my reflection in the glass with my optivisors on. Sorry about that. So when you put these on, I'm going to make note. You also want to clean any glue that was left on the pins after pulling them out if you don't break them. Now I've already cleaned these up, but if you don't clean them up, when this brake cylinder contacts this brace or this bracket, the hanger bracket, um, it bulges it outward. So to fix that, and it's an easy fix, what I have done is right over where that bracket goes, I've trimmed or I've cut this brake cylinder slightly flat. I took the um, raised surface off of each edge and just flattened it just a little bit. So you won't see it behind that bracket and it'll snug right up against it and I can glue up there and it won't bulge that bracket out. Because with uh, un unmodified brake cylinders it's going to push this bracket a little bit forward. So you don't want that. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drill out these brake cylinders for the plumbing. So I got my pin here. Now the side you want to put it on, you want to put it on the opposite side of the piston. So you want to put it on this back side that has the uh, uh, slack adjuster on it. And you want it right up at the top in the center. So I'm not going to be able to drill straight in, which is okay, but I'm going to put it right up at the top, right in center, and the drill will go slightly at an angle. I'm, using, I'm going to be using 10 thousandths wire, but I'm using a 12 thousandths drill bit, and I want to kind of angle it down just a little bit and be as straight as possible. I want to go into that cavity in the back of the brake cylinder. There we go. We got that one. Gotta get that little piece of slough off of there. There we go. So that takes care of that one. Clean that hole out, and we'll do the next one. Again, you want to do it on the slack adjuster side, not the piston side. There we go. 
Now we'll drill that slightly down at an angle and as straight as possible. There we go. All right, now I've drilled into this cavity in the back, so when I stick my wire in there, I can glue it from the inside. So, this is 10,000's phosphor bronze wire from Titchy. So, just nip of the end of it so it's clean. Then I take a diamond file and I clean up the end. And I, and I put some tooth on it so that when I glue it, it'll hold nicely. Now I want to bend, I want to bend a, a 90 degree on it. There we go. I need a little bit more roughing. There we go. Now I want to cut that off. All right, I'm going to stick that into the hole and facing outward. The direction of your mounting pins is outward. If I can hold this. I'm sorry if my fingers are all in the way. It's those little tiny parts. There we go. Just like that. And I want to... Oh, it's a little too long on the inside, so I need to trim that. There we go. There we go. So we got one in. I'll glue that. I'll glue these when I get the other one done. Now this pen will be trimmed a little bit longer. I mean, I'm longer, a little bit shorter. So we got that one done. Let's do the next one. Again, we'll make sure the end is clean. Bend it at a 90. Just pushing it against the, the glass to give it a sharp bend. Cut it off. Put it into the hole. What's going on here? Oh, there we go. <laughs> All right, and now I can glue them in place. All right, so what I do for glue is I just take a piece of this blue painter's tape. I'm going to put it off screen because I don't want it near where I'm working. And I'm going to take some medium CA and just put a drop on that painter's tape. The painter's tape has enough surface tension that keeps it bubbled. Same for thin CA. I can put that on it and it'll keep it bubbled also. And I got my little applicator. Always clean it off after each use.
My applicators are broken drill bits. I've been doing this for probably about 10 years or more. And now I'm just going to put some glue right where the pin is in the cavity. And I want to make sure that that pin comes out perpendicular from the brake cylinder. There we go. And just for extra strength, put a little bit more glue on there. And roughing that up will give the pin a good, um, or the glue a good bite to the surface of that uh, a pin. Do this one. Make sure it's perpendicular to the brake cylinder. There we go. Put a little bit more on there. All right, we can let those set. And now we can put them into our um, side frame. So I'm going to take some more glue. And I know that the cylinder will sit here, so these are the short holes. So I'll put a little bit of glue there. A little bit of glue there. That's a lot of glue. And just a smidgen on there. All right. So now we'll take this brake cylinder. And we'll stick it on. Stick it there, there. And up against the frame. Make sure it's seated properly. And make sure my pin is coming straight. Oh, that's nice and tight. And there we go. So now, what I'll do is I will cut this pin even with the face of the side frame. There we go. Oh, a little bit more. There we go. That's all taken care of. Now. now we'll do the next one. Need just a little bit more glue out. There we go. Clean the tip of my applicator. Put some glue second there's a little bit of stuff down in there there we go Make a little bit of glue put it there a little bit of glue put it there and just a little bit right there get the brake cylinder uh oh, just went flying. Have to turn the camera off here a second. Oh, uh, good thing, it didn't go on the floor. It hit me and went back onto the table. Whew, good thing. I've had bad luck with some of this stuff sometimes, grabbing it with bad tweezers. I need to get some real tweezers. I don't have real, like, hobby or laboratory tweezers. I keep using these beauty tweezers and they really suck. So, anyway. Now that my glue has dried, I need to clean it all off and start over again.
And that one's pretty much even. It's slightly in, but I need to clean the tip off. And there we go. And this one I need to cut just a little bit more. There we go. Alright. Next step is to make the hose. So this is a piece of Loke Sound wire. We've got the, the bunch of wire here. And what I do is I pull a little bit off and I take some flat nose pliers and grab all that wire, squeeze really hard and just start pulling. Just like that. Get all that wire out and just throw it away. Unless you can think of something else to use it for. Now, I want a clean cut on on the end. That one looks pretty good, but I want a clean cut, so I'm going to use some decal scissors. Just cut it off. Nice clean cut. And I am going to now slip that over this wire. Let me use some tweezers here. I don't want to squeeze it too hard with the tweezers. Because this will stay deformed. Once I get it on there, I want to push it all the way in. If I can. The other one went on very easily. There we go. So that piece of hose is on there. Now I want to cut off. Whoops. I got so much stuff on my desk right now. I usually don't work like this, but lately I have been. Cut that about halfway. And we'll do the other one. Just checking to see how far it sticks out. It can't stick out past the frame. So I might have to pull that off and cut the pin down just a little bit more. No, actually... Actually, that'll be good. That'll be fine. See this one. Yeah, that one has to be cut a little bit more. You know what? I'm going to take these off. And I'm going to trim those pins just a little bit more because you won't get a good... You won't get a good flow to the tubing. There we go. Let's get that back on there. There we go. And the 
let's put this one on. Oh, that glue came loose inside the brake cylinder, so now I gotta. Yeah. Best way to do this is to pre-open up these wire, these uh, these things. So I'll take a piece of wire. I'll sharpen it a little bit so there's no burrs on the end. And we will stick it into this tube. There we go. Now let's see if we can get that on there better. Then I'll glue it again from inside. Yeah, with that wire moving, I can't I can't get the uh Oh, that's why. <laughs> when I drilled the hole, it didn't expose it too good. All right, let's try that again. You guys want to see how, how I build models? You're seeing firsthand some of the troubles you go through. Come on. You can go in there. There we go. Okay. See if I still got, yep, still got some glue there. Get that on there. Get that pin that way. Now let's see if we can get this. See, open it up a little bit more. Looks like it shrunk down some. Cut that off just a little bit. There we go. This is not cooperating like the first one did. Okay. See if I can get that on there. There we go. Now if I can just get it to slide all the way down. It's working its way down, that's good. Sorry about this, guys. There we go. In place. You don't want to squeeze these too much because the uh, you'll deform them. So this one, this one's just going to come straight up like that, and this one is going to bend at a at a angle, and then come around. this way. All right, so now it's time to put one of these brake lines 
plumbing on. So, first thing I need to do is on the top of this, over the journal area here, this casting, there's a little hump. I need to take that hump off. It's on all of the castings. So I'm just going to take this knife, this chisel blade, come right in and slice it off. There we go. Takes care of that. And now we're going to put this right there. Well, not exactly right there, but pretty much right there. And I need to get a little helper out here. There we go. So now I can put it where it needs to be. Actually what I need to do first is I need to rough up this area for CA to stick to. Give it some tooth. So I'm gonna Actually, I need to go over the back side of it. That's not the back side of it. There we go. Now, let me get this in place. It's going to go right. I'm going to go right there. And what I need to do is, I think that'll be okay. Yeah, that'll be okay. This bend needs to come down right where that, that casting goes back to the side frame. And this needs to hang just below the bottom of the side frame. So now I'm going to take some thin CA. See if I can get this to stay in place while I'm applying the CA so it doesn't move anywhere. Let me see if I can't do that. There we go. All right. So that's where it needs to be. Now I can connect the hoses up, so I need to so I have to put it this way so I can properly see where I need to cut this. I'm going to hold this wire down so it doesn't move. And I need to get this over the end of that.
And that's too long. And I kinked this hose, so I gotta try to work it back out. I might need to put a new one on there. Yeah. I think I need to put a new one on there. Let me see if I got a piece long enough. Yeah, that'll work. Pull that one off. Once you kink that hose, it uh it won't it won't go back into shape again. Oh, now that one came unglued. Let me see what I got here. I just need to hold it. I need to figure out a way to hold this. Let's see if I can glue that from behind again. Some more glue on there. Scrape the old glue off. Now let's see what we got here. I want a nice flow to the to the hose. All right, so that takes care of that one. Now I need to hold this end down, so let me get some CA on there. There we go. Now I'll get some more CA on there. That's just to tack it in place. Now it looks like a lot, and it is, but we'll clean that up. Right now, I just want it to hold. Like for instance, you'll see there's some CA here and here. So what I do is I just come along the line of plumbing, and I make a cut, a shallow cut, and then I'll just scrape it off.
Uh, hopefully there's enough CA underneath it to hold it in place, but we'll see once I cut this side. Looks good. All right. So there's that side. That one's done. Now we got to do this one. Yeah, those pins need to be those pins need to be shorter, but I'm not going to cut them any shorter on this one. Alright, now I can't glue this down yet because I need it to, to be able to get the, the tube under it, so I'll just hold it in place. There we go. Too much tube. I need to cut more off. Okay, let me get that tube reformed. All right, so there's there's the two tubes. Now I can glue this down. Let's get some more CA out. Mine's turning into treacle. There we go. off my applicator there we go glued down now let's just glue it down all the way so we have some extra holding power all right now I can come back here I can scrape that glue off. If it's just a little bit of glue, you don't need to cut it. You can just scrape it. There's that. And there's that. Next thing we need to do is make the brackets. But this is what I make the brackets from. It's a piece of 12, I'm sorry, it's a piece of 10 thousandths wire. I anneal it and then I smash it. Whoops. I flatten it in a machinist vise. There's nothing special about it, just Put it into the vise and crank down on it and it'll flatten the wire. Then I can cut it into little pieces. So 
So this will be a bracket here. There's a bracket right there. How I make the bracket is I have a piece of wire here. I need to tape it down. And that's the same diameter as the plumbing wire. Since it's annealed, it'll bend real easy. So I'll take some chisel tweezers. If I can pick it up, put it over the wire, bring the jaws close together over the wire, press down and squeeze. So you're making a circular bend over the wire. Now these brackets, or these tie downs only have one leg to them. So I'm going to straighten this all out so it's all on the same plane. I'm going to come back here and I'm going to cut one of the legs off. And I'm going to shorten the other one to what I think it should be. I don't have an exact measurement, but it shouldn't be too long. Like that. I know you can't really see that. Take this. Now here's where you need to just be delicate. Okay, so this first bracket is going to go right here. Right like that. So now it's time to do some CA. Let me now that I've shown you what I do to make the brackets, I can move this piece of wire to a different location so it's not in my way while I'm building. There we go. All right. Now, get some more thin CA out. There we go. Clean off my applicator tool. And now I have to carefully hold this in place and get some CA underneath that little leg. Press it down, and it's it's secure there. And now I can load it up with more CA around it. All right, just like that. So I'm going to go ahead and make a bracket for here, a bracket for here, and a bracket for right there. So I'll get those done, I'll glue them in, and everything will be done the exact same way as this bracket, and then we'll show you what that looks like. And there I have the rest of the brackets put in place. So I've got that one in, and these two in, and of course the one you saw I put in that one. So the next step, now that we have the plumbing all done, the next step is to put in the Hyatt roller bearing caps. That's no big deal, it's no brainer. Um, if you look, if you look here, you got a flat spot You've got a flat spot and then round on the roller bearing journal. you got a flat spot and the rest of it's round. So what happens? It just goes in 
just like that. But before I do that, pop it out there. Inside here, there's a little bit of um, a little bit of a flash. So I have a ball end mill that's the exact same diameter as that. Let me see what is that? That is 074. So I'll just go in here and just twist it till I clean it out. And that cleans out, you can't see it, but that cleans out the inside. So I'll go ahead and get these three, or these other two cleaned out, and I'll get everything installed on here, and we'll move on to the next step. So the journals are on. Now, not all of them have that little bit of flash on the inside. So far, out of the six that I've put on, only two of them have. So, what I do is um, I hold them in place from the front, and then I take some medium CA and I put it all the way around the joint from the back side on all of them. I'm going to be drilling these three out for the speed recorder um, flange. So now I have to let those set and dry and we will put in the speed recorder flange. Now let me get these all cleaned up. I just have to cut them off this tree clean up the backs of them. Um, I'll just use a file, clean up the back. I'll put it in a, um, a pin vise from this side and then I'll just clean up around the circular portion of it. And then I'll drill these holes out. Drill these holes out and uh, get these installed. <clears throat> okay. I've got these all cleaned up, ready to be installed. Actually, they're not ready to be installed. I have to cut this pin down a little bit. But we'll do that later. Right now, I need to drill holes through the front of these journals. So there's a little detail, a really nice detail, <coughs> excuse me, down inside these journals, which is a square, like bolt looking thing. <coughs> but it keeps the drill bit from going center. So what I've done for these two, I'll do for this one, is I want to find the center with my pin and then I want to push a big old hole or a big old starting point for my drill right in the center. Now I can take a smaller drill see if I can do it with this in here take a smaller drill and I can center drill that all the way through. I'm trying to keep the drill bit as straight as possible. It doesn't take much to go through. There we go. Um, and then I use my next size up and drill it out. So the whole size that I need to get to is about 0 0.066. Cause these things, these things are 0 0.065, these flange pins. And then I go with my larger bit and see how we're doing. Ooh, it's, actually it's pushing off to the side. You know what? I need to step it down. So let me get out a 50 thousandths bit. something in the fifty thousandths range correct the center of the hole, there we go I was taking too big of a bite with that sixty thousandths I think these are forties yeah. oh nope there's an 050, there's my 059 right there okay That one, that one, and that one. 
Right now, let's see if I can use my big bit. Put those drill bits back in their case. And get the 66 out. Oh yeah, that's better. Now if it's a, this one's a little off center, but I'll correct that. For some reason these are all going a little off center, but that's okay. I can correct that. There we go. Now I need to clean up. Put a little bit of a chamfer on there. And this is how you correct the off center. Because the pin's not going to go all the way through this hole. It's just going to be contacting this top edge. There we go. Yeah, put a little chamfer on there. There's that one. And this one needs a big old push to this side. There we go. Put a little chamfer on there. And we're all set. So there's the, the holes are drilled. Now I need to cut these pins down and I'm going to cut them down if you see real close here. Let me get a pointer out here. There was an air bubble in the mold which created this cavity and there's an opening right there. So I'm going to cut this right to the base of the opening. into the opening. I want that. There we go. And that's good. So I need to do that for all three of these. my fingers. All right. So those are all set. Now, the orientation of the, there's six bolt heads on the front of these flanges. There'll be three down and three up. Just checking the orientation of everything. Make sure it sits flat. All right. I just got to do a little bit of cleanup. Where's my knife? There we go. There we go. I'll use some medium CA. Get my tool, application tool. Clean it out. And I'll put a bead right around the inside of that hole. And we'll take the flange. It's all cleaned up. Let's see if I can put it in that hole right there. And now quickly rotate the bolt heads so they're up and down there we go 
and there's one of them. I'm going to look down the edge of it, make sure it's flat up against the face of that roller bearing, and it is. And then what I do is that hole is closed in. I want to spread it out from, from when I cut it off. So I can take my pen, I'm going to push it right down through, stab myself. There we go. And that spreads everything out so it uh, holds into the hole better. Do the next one. First make sure it fits. A little bit of uh, material pushing out, so I'll get my my file out and file the file the sides. Now we'll see if it fits. It fits just fine. So let me get that back out. That one's in there pretty good. Alright. Get some CA. Get it around there. There we go. Make sure it's flattened down all the way around. Put this out. And that's good. Now I'll take my pin, wherever I put it, there we go, and I will push it through the hole, spread that material out. There we go. There's flange number two. Now flange number three, let's see how it fits. And it's a really small pin. I cut a little too much off, but it'll work. All right, so it does fit. I just got to glue it on now. Need to open this hole up just a little bit more. There we go. Take some glue. Stick it around in the hole and on the top surface here. Take this flange and see if I can get it in the right orientation. Press it in. push the pin through it. And there we have three flanges on that one. Now we need to put the caps on. And the caps, like I mentioned before, are these Canon and Company excess covers for the nose kits. So let me get those out and we'll get them on. Alright, so I've put two 
of the caps on and so I'll do this one with you. So first thing you got to notice is on the back of these excess plates so where's my pen there? Right? You have a little raised circular area that can go into a hole to help you line it up. Well one thing you need to understand is this circular raised area is not concentric with the outside circle. So you have to um, adjust for that and I'll show you how I do that. Now I cut these off with a little bit of a tab on there. You can see that right there. So to clean these up, try to keep this on camera here. I try to cut this tab off as close to the circle as possible without flattening a side of the circle. There we go. Now there's little raised bolt heads on the face of this thing. So I want to turn the area that I just cut opposite of my tweezers and I want to slip my tweezers between the bolt heads, hold it firmly, take a sanding stick and just carefully sand off the remnants of the tree, of the sprue tree. And that takes care of that. Now, like I said, that hole is not concentric. So what I do is I carve this hole just a little bit bigger which gives me room to move that excess plate or the cover plate around to try to get it as centered as possible. Now I said there's bolt heads on the face of this excess plate. You need to have the orientation of all that is there's a bolt head to the left and a bolt head to the right. So it's horizontal. So I'm going to put that in there. Now I'm going to get the bolt heads oriented properly. And now it's center. Now you're thinking, well, how are you going to hold that there to glue it? Well, this is made of plastic. And this is made of metal. But we just need to tack it in place. So I put a little bit of liquid cement under it. Now it's tacked in place. Now... I can turn it over, I can hold it with my finger, I can take some CA and put it in from behind. Just like that. And there we go. That's taken care of. So that's all done uh, as far as putting the caps on and stuff. I have one more thing to do and that is to install the sanding nozzles and the pin that the sanding hose will go over. So real quick on the back of these there is a spot excuse me <coughs> there's a spot for where the nozzle goes but these nozzles are too big in diameter to fit into that so I use a round file and I'll file that out until the file hits the bottom of the notch and that'll leave two wings on the side that I can glue
that I can glue the nozzle into. Okay, so there's that one. Remember, this is Delrin, so it gets kind of raggedy. But that's okay, we want a good rough surface. to glue the nozzle to. So that's taken care of. Now we need to do the nozzle. And I put my 12 thousandths piece of wire away that I need. There it is. Piece of brass wire right there. All right, now I've got 12 thousandths drill bit, and I need to, to cut that off and drill it out. Before I do that, though, I want to grit blast this, so when I glue it to here, this has a good gritty surface to glue to, so let me go ahead and do that. All right, so these are grit blasted. I'm going to cut that off where the straight part ends. Now, I'm going to use my super sharp, razor sharp eyes and prick a hole or a drill starting point right in the middle. Now with this 12 thousandths drill bit, I'm going to see if I can't center drill this thing. And keep it straight. There we go. Got it in about half, a little over half the length of the drill bit. Now, I want to clean up an end on this 12 thousandths wire. I want to use a diamond file and rough it up. Whoop. And then I want to give it a little bit of a point so it doesn't catch on anything. Let me test fit it. That works good. Now I'm going to get some CA out. Just a little bit. I'm going to dip the end of this wire into the CA. Put it over the tip and just push it down in. And there's my nozzle. Now, it's not in exactly straight, but that's okay. You'll see when it's done that it doesn't matter. Okay, so I'm going to cut this off right about there. 
I'm going to file the end of it. And I'm going to give this a little bit of a arcing bend. Just a little bit. And I'm going to glue that right into there. So let me put some CA there. And that's what it'll look like from the front side. So right now I'm going to take a little bit more CA. Clean my applicator off here. It's got a bubble on the end. And I'm going to put some fresh CA on the outside here and here that'll give a good firm hold to that and that's what that looks like so I'll go ahead and get this side done and that truck will be ready for grip blasting and then painting all right, so now I have two truck side frames done. This is the one I did tonight with you guys. And this is the one I did last night. So now I need to work on the other side. So I basically get one truck done a night. And uh, so that means I've got 14 more nights of <laughs> building side frames. But anyway... Um, that takes care of showing you how I, I do the side frame. I know this video is kind of long and I'm sorry about that, but I wanted to show you every step. Um, there will probably be one more video with truck side frames in it, but that's just to show you anything special or anything that I might come across that I think you need to see or would like to see. But for the most part, everything will go together the same way as I showed you on this truck and, and such. Well, that takes care of showing you the majority of what I'm going to be doing with these side frames. There probably will be one more um, truck video and that, as I mentioned, that'll be to show you anything special or anything I think you might need to know. I need to show you how I fix the pins that I broke and, and things like that. But the bulk of it was shown in this video. So I'm going to do pretty much the same to the other um, side frames. On this 4351, on the front left, um, the truck will look pretty much the same as what I showed you. The difference is the leading axle does not have the flange plate. The middle axle has a speed recorder. The rear axle of the front truck on the left side does have a flange plate. On the uh, rear truck for the left side, none of the axles have the uh, flange plate, so they'll just be the... Um, the Hyatt roller bearing caps as done by um, scale trains. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I know it's kind of long and I'm really sorry about that, but I really did want to show you all the steps and what it really takes to, to build one of these things. I know I stumbled through a little bit of the air hose on that one. Uh, the first one I did, everything went together perfectly. So of course, when I'm showing it on video, it's going to um, have a problem. Um, again, thank you for watching, and if you stayed through this whole thing, I really appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next video.